All right. Hey, everybody. So in the last episode, you had your first introduction to session handling, right? Sessions 101. But now let's kick things up a notch and figure out an actual practical use case for sessions within an application. All right, let's get going. If I open my routes file, yeah, of course, we will build a form to register a new user. So let's start with the routes, and we'll keep it very simple. Uh, this will go into a controller's directory, and why don't we call it, I don't know, registration slash create. How about that? All right, let's go in here, create a new directory called registration, and then our first PHP file for uh, create. All right, so this will load a view, and just like before, it'll go in a registration directory, and uh, we'll name it the same thing. All right, let's create the view. Views, uh, let's add our directory and then create. And I'm sorry, I forgot we gave these a dot view uh, extension. All right, and then just to save myself a little time, why don't we grab some of this and then we can replace it all with uh, register here, something like that. All right, let's have a look in the browser. All right, so here's the home page, and yeah, I don't yet have a link to register. We will probably put it right up here. But yeah, for now, if I manually visit that URI. All right, it works. Now, of course, in this case, I get a warning uh, because we haven't yet provided a heading variable, but sure enough, we are loading this page. Okay, so here's what I'd like to do next. I will once again visit tailwindui.com, and I promise I'm not trying to sell you on it. Uh, at all, but they do provide some free templates that are great for little exercises like this. So I'm gonna look for some kind of form. Yeah, it looks like they have one to sign in and register, and this should be fine for our needs. So why don't we uh, copy this and see if we can make use of it. I will place it, um, I'm not sure, maybe within this main tag. Yeah. So let's scroll up and yeah, we already have the forms component. Uh, here, they want us to update the HTML and body tags to make uh, to make the height 100%, but I don't know if we'll even worry about that. So let's get rid of that. And yeah, let's just cross our fingers and see how this looks. So if I come back and give this a refresh, I still see my warning, but sure enough, we have the beginnings of a, a login form or a registration form. Okay, so next, I don't think we need a banner here, so let's hide it, and that will remove the warning. And yeah, I think this looks good. So now let's just update a few things, like uh, sign in would change to register. All right, uh, what about this section here? Instead of signing in, we are going to register for a new uh, account. I don't, we're not gonna have any kind of trial. All right, um, remember me and forgot your password. Those are useful, but we're not gonna worry about that here. So let's grab Hmm, forgot your password. Here we go. Let's grab all of that. Give it a reformat, come back, refresh. And this is good enough, uh, at least for the demo. Okay, so now, and by the way, this is populated maybe from my password manager, but of course, uh, we have an email address and a password. So the next thing I'd like to do is update the form itself. And you can see what do they give us by default. Uh, it's gonna make a post request, but the action is a, a hash symbol. So why don't we have it uh, post to that exact same endpoint? And then we will have a look at each uh, field. All right, so yeah, in our database, we're gonna call this column email. So why don't we update this like so, all right. Password looks good. And then the only thing I don't see is uh, some validation errors. So I think we did this, hmm. Let's go into notes slash create. And yeah, a number of episodes ago, didn't we have something? Yeah, right there. All right, let's switch back. And I don't know if this is right, but we could try putting it there to start. And we could say, if there's any errors for the email, show it here. This may not be right for formatting uh, with this component, but it's good enough at least to illustrate uh, the approach. And we'll do the same thing if there happens to be any errors for the password. All right, come back, give it a refresh, and this looks good to me. Okay, so now if I were to submit this form, of course we're going to get a 404 because it tried to submit a post request to slash register, but
but we haven't yet created a route for that. So that would be the next step. Go back to your routes file. I will duplicate this line and now listen for a post request and that will hit a store action or a store controller. Okay, come on up and let's duplicate this store. And now I'm just gonna say here to show that it works, register the user. Okay, come back, give it another try, hit register, and now we have hit that endpoint. Okay, so of course at this point, within the post super global, we should have access to the email address and the password that the user provided. So let's give that a shot. I will type password here, we register, and we see it looks like Tailwind has some kind of uh, remember input that I will get rid of. Uh, but then we have our email address and our password. Okay, so that means the provided email will be post email. The provided password would be post uh, password. Okay, so now, yeah, at this point, you're gonna follow the exact same steps that we've used for every other form, just with a slight tweak. So think about it. Uh, we would wanna validate the form inputs. Uh, we would want to, but then at this point, after we validate, think about it, you'd wanna check. What if I try to register Jeffrey at Laracast.com, but there's already an account for Jeffrey at Laracast.com? We need to check for that. So check if the uh, account already exists. And then at this point, we would have a branch. So like, if so, if yes, then we'll think about it. What should happen? If somebody tries to register an account, but there's already an account, maybe we should uh, let them know. Maybe we should redirect them to a login page. How about that? Redirect to a login page that we haven't yet created. Okay. Otherwise, we could say, if the account doesn't exist, then create it. Uh, or save it, or save one to the database, uh, and then log the user in and redirect. That's sort of what we're dealing with here. And yeah, uh, a quick note on these comments. Of course, you don't have to do things like this. You can skip over it. But I find, even after having done this for years and years, it's useful just to get your mind in order of what do I need to do. You know, if you're trying to plot out your day, you might take out a, a notepad and say, I gotta do this and this and this. The same is going to be true uh, for the programs you write. And then when you're done, you can just uh, erase each comment as you complete it. All right, so in this case, validate the inputs. Well, I could say validator, and you'll remember uh, we have two methods, one to validate a string and one to validate an email. So why don't we start with the email? Validate the email, and if it is not valid, then let's append to an errors array like we've done uh, before. So we might say errors email, um, please provide uh, an email address. And not just an email address, but a valid email address. All right, next, why don't we validate the password? Uh, let's do a string for the password. And you'll remember when we created this a number of episodes ago, we can accept the number of characters that we want to check for. So why don't we say a password has to be at least seven characters, but no more than 255 characters. Uh, 255 is just a common maximum character count uh, for your for your database uh, varchars or, or variable character columns. Okay, so the next step would be, um, well, if the errors array is not empty, then we have a problem. So again, you will eventually learn about a process where if validation fails, you would actually redirect. But at this point, we're still going to return a view. So let's return our registration slash create view. And then I'm gonna pass through the corresponding errors. All right, and then, oh yeah, I forgot to update this. If we, uh, if we have a password validation error, please provide a password of at least seven characters. Okay, so let's give this a shot in the browser. All right, so back on the registration form, let's try a password of only three characters. And yeah, of course, it looks like the styling isn't quite right there. I see a shadow. I'll have to figure out what Tailwind UI wants you to do there, uh, but otherwise it doesn't really matter. Sure enough, we are uh, triggering a validation error and then we provide feedback to the user, which is good. All right, so let's switch back 
And at this point, if we get beyond this clump of code that later I'll show you how to clean up and organize better, uh, then we can move on to this section. Check if the account already exists. So what we might want to do is grab or resolve our database class that we created. And then I could say db query. And let's say select star from the users table where the email address equals the one that was submitted through the registration form. And if there is, well, think about it. That means, hey, we already have an account for that email address. So let's uh, run that query. We'll send through the email and get the result. So we'll save that to result and then find a corresponding record and then die and dump. And we'll have a talk about this. All right, so before we run this in the browser, let's switch over to table plus and we'll have a look at that user's table from a number of episodes ago. And yeah, right now it just has a name and an email. Why don't we tweak this a little bit? Uh, let's say instead of name, we're gonna have a password that cannot be null. Okay, so now, again, it's super simple. In real life, you'll have many more columns. But at the moment, our users table contains an email address and a password, and that's it. And let's then populate it with something like joe at example.com, and then a password that's stored in clear text, which is a really big no-no. And we're gonna fix that in a little bit, but not quite yet. Okay, and yeah, we'll give it a shot. All right, so back to the register page. We will register uh, an email address that already exists in the database, and we should die, and there we go. We die and dump the results. We already found a corresponding record. Now, in this case, we don't even need to do anything with the results. So if you want, you could check uh, if the record exists, or you, you check for the count. Uh, using a SQL query, but this will be fine. However, if I try to register an account that does not exist within that table, you'll see that it returns false. So yeah, at this point, this is where we have our branch. We could say uh, user, and yeah, right here you could say, well, if we have a user in the database, then someone uh, with that email already exists and has an account, right? Th that's basically what that means. So we said, uh, on that condition, redirect to the login page. So we could say header uh, location is login. But you know what? That doesn't even exist yet. Uh, we haven't yet created that route. So for now, uh, I'll send them to the home page. And we will build the login page um, maybe in the next episode. Otherwise, we have this pathway save uh, one to the database, and then log the user in and redirect. And this is where we can actually start working with uh, sessions. So let's see. We start with a new query. Insert into the users table, and we wanna give it an email address and a password. And the values, of course, will be email and password. And then I will pass those bindings through. So again, for the moment, I'm gonna pass this password in clear text. But yeah, uh, in the near future, I will teach you how to hash the password and then compare it when we build the login form. And that's why I'm holding off. All right, so we have created uh, the account. At this point, we sort of want to mark that the user has logged in. So I think that would be a good use for sessions. I could say session. And yeah, you could do something like this, logged in if you want, or maybe you just add maybe a key like user, and you make that equal to uh, whatever you want. How about an array itself where the email address is uh, the user's email? Or maybe you add multiple things, like maybe you, you add the user, but you also have some helpers like this that you set to true, whatever you wanna do here. Okay, so uh, there's more to do here. Um, ideally, there are some good practices about how you um, create new sessions, how you log in, when you regenerate the session, but we'll get to all of that uh, in the next episode or two. The final step for now is to redirect, um, and often this is like to the user's private dashboard or their settings area. For now, once again, we will redirect to uh, the home page, and then we can exit or die, and we can do the same thing up there as well. That's always a good practice. After you redirect, uh, kill the script basically. Exit because uh, you want to ensure there's no scenario where uh, the, the script continues being executed after the header. All right, so a lot of stuff here. And again, I promise you there are ways to clean this up and ways to simplify things. But 
it's good to do it this way to have a general idea of the flow. And you'll find that this happens over and over where you submit a form and you need to validate it a little bit. You may need to run a database query. You may need to um, respond dependent upon the state of that database. Uh, you might want to append things to the session or to the cache. This is all really common stuff that you will write over and over. Okay, so the only remaining step is to ensure that this works. So I think we're going to make use of this. All right, so let's say when the user goes to the index uh, controller, that will hit this view. So let's scroll down into the index view. And yeah, maybe we can go into the navigation area. And let's see. What I want to do, if I switch back, is uh, find this section here with this guy. So it looks like uh, they're using unsplash.com. There it is. So let's see, if I get rid of that, is that the one? Yeah. Okay, so why don't we do this? Why don't, we'll still use that avatar to assume that you're logged in. But I might say, well, if uh, session user, and remember, we can't always assume that anything is in the session. So we could check for if is set or uh, assume that it's false. We could do something like that. If they're signed in, then uh, show that image. Otherwise, maybe we have uh, a link to register or log in, right? So let's start with a registration link, register. And that will go to slash register. And yeah, this is how we can handle uh, that sort of flow. All right, so if I switch back and give it a refresh, now we have a register link. That's a little hard to see. We'll make it white. And yeah, now uh, if we're not signed in, I can click on register. And yeah, we can create a new account for myself. Uh, Jeffrey at Laracast.com, password. That should create a new record uh, within the database. If we switch back, give it a refresh, sure enough, we have an account where, again, the password is stored in clear text, and you don't want to do that, but I promise I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, but either way, now we can see that we have written to the session, uh, and because we have a user in the session, uh, that conditional that we just wrote earlier returns true. So now, you know, we can say you are signed, you know, whatever you want to do here uh, to, to signal, and it's still black, but you get the idea, uh, to signal that the user has now signed in and they now have permission to access certain pages that are exclusive to logged in users. Okay, so we covered so much there. I'm very sorry about that, but we had to get through some of this stuff. Uh, in the next episode, we're still focused on sessions and we'll keep digging a little further. So I just want to finish up by once again drilling in that because we have uh, signed in and created a new session, we now have a cookie with this session ID. And yeah, then on the server side, as you learned in the last episode, a corresponding file will be created that contains details about the session associated uh, with this particular ID. So in our case, uh, if we open that file, Again, we did this all in the last episode, but it was pretty beneficial to me when I learned how it all worked. If I open that uh, specific file, you can see details about my current session. And that's why you want to be a little bit careful, by the way. Uh, if you're not careful, you can fall prey to what's known as session hijacking. And that's basically where a malicious user gains access to this cookie and can swap out that value uh, with a different ID. But again, that is a little more advanced than where we currently are. We'll get there. Uh, but for now, let's just take things step by step and move on in the next episode.